Ready, shot. Be ready for the handoff with Heritage Distilling's canned cocktails. Real cocktails made with real spirits. Drop the hard seltzers made by Big Beer on the East Coast with their fake flavors, fake sweeteners, and after-game bloating. Ew. Real cocktails can only be made with real spirits. Heritage Distilling's canned cocktails. Locally made, locally loved, and award-winning. Available at local retailers and heritagedistilling.com. 6.9% ABV, Gig Harbor, Washington. If you need a place to enjoy the best years of your life after 60, help at home, or rehab after surgery, Carriage is here for you. Carriage is a family-owned health care and senior living company that puts people first. Enjoy a vibrant retirement in an elegant, amenity-rich community in Washington or California. Rehab after surgery in Bellevue or Renton, or care at home throughout King, Pierce, and Thurston counties. We're here for you. Learn more at Carriage.com. What's up? It's your boy, the Fed Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land, the podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. Hard to admit it's drinking time. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the Men's Room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Drink time it is, and as usual, we head to see drink desk and see the throw hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed. Today we toast, well, poor chases and bad choices and baby names. Now, we have one guy set up. We will get to him, say, next month. You know uh, but in the meantime, <laughs> no, but there's so many names. There's so many names I want to make fun of, right? There's a tech specialist that works at Apple. He works for Apple. His name is Samsung. There's the fifth grade teacher, and her name, I don't know her first name, but she's listed in the yearbook. He is listed in the yearbook as Mr. Perv. There's the kindergarten teacher, her name, and keep in mind, she married into this name, Mrs. Rape. Mrs., of course, meaning she married into it. There's a high school student, his name is Flavor Balls. There's a (laughs) flavor with a U, F-L-A-V-O-U-R, Flavor Balls. There's an assistant dean of multicultural recruitment. Serious boner. But today, today, we decided we're going to honor the one guy. And I've seen this guy on the internet for years, but he finally deserves his due. It's a white dude. That's all you need to know. He's a white guy. His last name is already unfortunate for being a white guy. But then his parents decided, what the hell, let's make his life a complete disaster. That would be Rowdy Negro. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's a real dude, man. So, uh, <laughs> thank God it's not Juneteenth. I know. <laughs> If this guy, if he books something. It's just the the day we're recognizing it yeah, on the federal I'm, holiday level. It was actually yesterday. Right. Rowdy. Glad, glad yeah. one got through, the other didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rowdy Negro. Yes, He's a See what we did there? Uh-huh. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah, that's his name. And in his yearbook Jesus. photo, he looks like kind of a funny dude. Right? He's got his tongue sticking out a little bit, but it says, you know, Rowdy Negro. And then you have your own quote. It just says, yes, this is my real name. I feel bad for him. Rowdy's not a bad name. Rowdy's not a bad name. It's kind, it's of, like kind of a cool made you name. Like a badass. Yeah. When your last name's Negro, pick something else <laughs> or change your last name. Yeah. Uh, so on. we pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. 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 So over the tongue and <laughs> down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitchola. The Men's Room presents Profile This. And Stephen Throw Hill, could you please hear on now Profile <laughs> This is played. Okay. Uh, sure, Gay and Miles, it's a simple game where, hey, you know how I am, man. I know how you are. You know how I am. You know how uh, I am. <laughs> it's a simple game where we share with you a real life news story. Something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. I'm so proud of myself. Right I know now. you are. Hello, Patrick. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. All right, Patrick, you understand how this year game is played? I do. All right. You have a choice of three stories. The wonderful world of drugs. We have bite me. In other words, what did someone find in their food? And finally, interior decorating, where you guess the foreign object that ended up on the inside of someone. Let's go bite me. Just eat it, eat it. Get yourself an egg and beat it. 
I'm going to be honest with you, man. As you research one of the three categories of these stores, I feel like Bite Me is the one that disturbs me most. Right, because with interior decorating, nine times out of ten, you made the decision to insert things. With the drugs, you chose to do Bite Me, it's always a discovery. And as I research stories for Bite Me, I've discovered that a lot of the same items contaminate various foods. Condoms, roaches, band-aids. And as I always say, a shockingly high number of severed fingers. And that's exactly what yeah. I want you to share. I swear to God, it would blow your mind. So what I want you to guess today, which one of the following did not, did not have a human finger involved? And on the back side of this, I will give you a quick synopsis of the stories where it showed up. So the question is, where did a finger not show up? Was it yeah. a hamburger? Chili, frozen custard, or gumbo? Hamburger, chili, frozen custard, or gumbo? Only one of these did not have a severed finger show up. Was it canned chili? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't. I, I, like, I actually enjoy canned chili. I like Nally's. I like Castleberry's. Well, just mild. You had the right answer last week because the yogurt was unopened. Yeah, Miles did the detective work and said, "All right, look, that okay. is sold All right. sealed." All right, Patrick. Then okay, then based on you reminding me of that, which I can't remember. No, I thought I couldn't say anything at the time, but I'm like, you're thinking. Right? I was going. I'll go frozen yogurt or custard. Sorry, you want custard? Yeah, custard. Cust- and what is custard? Uh, it's like something your grandfather says. We should get some custard. What the? What is custard? <laughs> something that you freeze yeah, and enjoy I, later. I guess I'll go with Miles. Uh, let's go frozen custard. All right. You're gonna. Uh, we got two for custard. Yeah, it's like sherbet. Hey, who the hell gets that? Same people who get custard. Same people who get custard. Yeah, it's... even those options. One more time. All right, so your hamburger, options... chili, frozen custard, or gumbo. <sighs> it's only not in one of those. Right. It's sad. I'm gonna say it's not in the hamburger. Not in the hamburger. I don't right. know all those. Okay, it's not a hamburger. It would just be too lumpy, in my opinion. Okay, where was a finger not found? Hamburger, chili, frozen custard, or gumbo? We'll let you know next. That was a tease. At Seattle Credit Union, we believe in our communities and the people we serve. The path to U.S. citizenship can be expensive, which is why we offer citizenship loans to cover the costs associated with this process. We also offer a fee-based alternative for each citizen loan type for people who would prefer not to pay any interest. Visit seattlecu.com to learn more or give us a call at 855-575-9352 to speak with a friendly loan expert to get started today. Seattle Credit Union is federally insured by the NCUA. 99.9 KISW. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Category is up by me on profile. There's a ton of things that have been found in food. Oh a my finger God, uh, being one of them. So a finger has been found in food a lot. Yes, it has. Three of the four options that I gave you. So was the finger not found in hamburger, chili, a frozen custard, or gumbo? Patrick, that is the very question we asked you. Let us start. Mike, I have bad news. Uh oh. A Bolivian Uh-oh. woman. A Bolivian woman. She never took finger food the same way again after she bit into a burger and ended up chomping on a decomposing oh, human oh finger. God. A video of the find started blowing up online. It's quote, at the moment of eating, I chewed on a finger. No. You can figure out the rest of the I story. I would have figured at best it would have been ground up. She wouldn't have even known. We have chili. Chili. Was there a finger found in chili? In 2005, guess what? A man in San Jose, California, a woman, sorry, in San Jose, California, she found a finger in her cup of Wendy's chili. Ooh, the case got crazy. Oh, oh, I love Wendy's chili. Detectives determined that the finger belonged to a Nevada man who'd given it to the woman's husband to plant in her food, hoping to scam uh, the restaurant. So she did find right, a finger okay, in her Wendy's okay. chili, but Wendy's was not responsible for the finger found in her chili. And finally, the third, are you ready? Let's go, Gumbo. In 2005, North Carolina resident Clarence Stowers. Looking like it. She was tucking into a container of Cole's frozen custard. Ah! When she encountered a severed <laughs> finger, officials said the digit had ah! recently been attached to a worker who was injured in the food processing machine accident. So you understand. Oh. He lost it. He went into the custard. But, they, oh, but here's man. the thing. They say the dude, he put the finger in his mouth thinking it was a piece of candy. So it turns out oh, the one no. food 
so far, but given time, that we have not found a finger. Gumbo. Gumbo. I'll be damned. Which to me seems like the most likely. You, you, you slice, you know, sausage, There's a million things, chicken, right? Green pepper, the, right. onion. But believe it or not, so yeah, no. there's been a Damn. severed finger found oh, in sorry, Patrick. There's been a severed finger found in chili. There's been a severed finger found in uh, a hamburger. And you know what's worse? I have another one of these. There's three more where a severed finger ended up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Now for all TV news all time, time for TV time with Tia. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, Armageddon. the men's room presents TV time with Ted. Ah! Alrighty, Jen. So uh, earlier already, we covered a little bit of our of our childhood, talking about things that we like to do outside. Well, now I'm going to tackle the thing that we did do inside. I feel like everybody in this room did when we were all inside. We watched a little show by the name of Sesame Street. Hell yeah! A lot of us learned pretty much everything that we needed to do, uh, needed to know to get us started, get us into kindergarten, and a little Absolutely. bit beyond mm-hmm. on Sesame Street. If it wasn't, and it was, a, it was a hip show. It was going a fun back show. and just watching that clip from today. I'm like, man, Sesame Street was great. It, it sounds was. stupid, but like, I would be thankful to Sesame Street for the amount it taught me before I got to school. Electric Company is the same way, in sure. a different way, but. Do you know your ABCs? I sure do. And exactly. Sesame Street told me. Do you I know your numbers? I know. I, vague, I I remember learning how to count to ten in Spanish. Thank you. Thanks to Sesame, Sesame Street. Street. Right. I mean, that's right. all. Or Via Alegre. Alegre. Exactly. La, 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 la. exactly. All the characters that were on there. It's it's impossible not to love it. But did you guys know that there was actually a Sesame Street episode that received so many parent complaints for being quote too scary for their kids that it was shelved for almost fifty years? I just read this, and I'm trying to think it, what. But- what was going on in Sesame Street? The parents were like, my kid, I mean, did Big Bird show up with a penis? I mean, like, what, what happened? happened? That's a good question. Not only that, but there's no test audience. Someone watched this <laughs> right. and said, ah, this scared me as a kid. I don't know if it's right. a good idea. And to be honest with you, we wouldn't know about it just because it would have come and gone within our lives, and then we just don't ever hear about it again. It's not like it was front page news, like, we've just pulled this episode of Sesame Street. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, it says, those days are now over. The episode from 1976, it was like episode 879 or something like that, uh, made its way online thanks to Reddit, and now you're probably wondering what was so scary about it. By the way, I would have been watching it still at first grade uh, age. So I, have, I, yeah. I think I'm still watching the show. So I'm going to play you a little bit of a clip. You at home, obviously the people here in the studio know, what, know what's going on about this. See if you can recognize one of the voices in this clip. Lady, look, you got to be more careful with this broom. You know? Wait a minute. It's this, my broom. Uh, well, that may be true. true. I have anything to do because that, I that thing almost came no. out. It came out of the no. sky and almost hit me right in the head. Well, that was the wind. It was not me. Well, you have to be more careful. Well, I am. Uh, doesn't really be careful. Let calm let down. Down. Calm down. Let let you can't it. have the let broom until it. you calm. Let me have it. You can't have the broom. Until you show me a little respect. Oh, yes, I can. No, you can't. Oh, I forgot. I can't so much as lay a finger on that room as long as somebody else is holding on to it. Now, if you're leaning on the edge, I probably should have described you what exactly is happening in the scene here. Uh, in the scene, a, a young gentleman comes out of a store. He looks up in the sky. There is something falling from the sky. He leans down and reaches up and grabs it, and it is a wicker broom. Mm-hmm. And then around the corner, the Wicked Witch of the West. Yes. Wicked Witch of the West comes around yeah, the East corner. East is gone. That's right. Dorothy Kelder. Mm-hmm. And this particular actress looked the part, you know, a little bit on the older side, but you know, it is going to be what it is for, for Sesame Street. But then when I heard that voice, I said, no freaking way. And then sure enough, the story comes out. That is actually Margaret Hamilton from The Wizard of Oz. She appeared in character as the Wicked Witch of the West. She was the original actress. She showed up for two days and they cut the whole damn, st- probably one of the only episodes of Sesame Street that's ever hit the chopping block, you know, the, the yeah. floor. But what's crazy, it's the Wicked Witch, right? But we were all introduced to the Wicked Witch of the West through the Wizard of Oz. In the 1930s. In in the Wizard of Oz, she was homicidal. Right. Because Dorothy had murdered her sister. It's understandable. She had a bit of a bloodlust. She tried to kill every character that we were supposed to. She lit the scarecrow on fire. She's on Sesame Street. She didn't light Big Bird on fire. Like, she's not scary in that scenario. No. She's just a mean old lady. And then when you go back and you watch the clip, she hasn't lost a beat one iota. No. Like, she clicked right back into the Wicked Witch of the West perfectly. Somehow, her because she this was just 10 years before she died. This was She was well into her 70s at this point when this episode say, came out. Yeah, you, you did probably the 30s. I was like, oh, my God, is it that old? I think right. yeah. So she right. was already an adult. And she was born 1902, so she's 37 years old when she records 1976. that. 1976. Right. Wow. 40 years and after then you the cut fact. Her. You cut her out of the damn thing. I know. And I that's agree a to crime. come here and reprise this character. But she, she's a character for children. 
I started right. watching Wizard of Oz. I can still sit down and watch it now, but I started watching it at roughly the age you'd watch Sesame Street. Mm-hmm. And yeah, she scared mm-hmm. me, but the thing is, she's supposed to. Right, she's a bad character. She's a bad character trying to kill somebody. So it's it's understood that she's a bad On Sesame Street, I, I don't know, man. But did you I, see I, everything else that came out? You know, it's, it's one of those where after-the-fact theories that come out. The Wicked Witch of the West was not the bad character of the movie. Who, who's the bad character? The bad character is actually Glinda, the Good Witch of the North. Why is that? So here's why. <laughs> so the Wicked Witch of the West just shows up. She's like, holy crap, a house fell on my sister. You killed my sister. Right. Okay, well, at least let me have her shoes. No, no, no. We're going to give <laughs> give this little twerp from Kansas the shoes right. that dropped a house on your sister. We're going to give her the shoes. And Glinda had, I, I'm going to completely screw up this theory, but... She was the only other remaining witch at that point. So she sends Dorothy on this mission to go over to Emerald City to to talk with the wizard, the the only other more powerful (laughs) being in the area, to then expose himself for the fraudster that he is, kill the Wicked Witch of the West, and now... Leaving Glinda as the mm, only supernatural... Bingo. The true, right, Glinda. The, the true villain is the is, is the good witch of the north. The thing is, you know, and, and look, as a kid, I kind of missed some of the subtleties. No, the but flying like, monkeys. You can't be That's mad. Right. <laughs> you can't be mad at the wicked witch of the west because you're right. Someone just killed my sibling. Right. All I'm asking for, the only thing her I asked for in return slippers. were her shoes. Someone's like, nah. I didn't give them to the right. murderer. I'd be pissed. Yes. The house fell on her. Right. You weren't responsible for a tornado picking up a house. And no, on a I'm not going to be forgiving about it, though. Right. It doesn't mean right. that you've got a pair of shoes from the person you. that your house falls yeah, on. Like, like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't go to Kansas and go like, dude, you're responsible for the tornado that killed my brother. Right. It's the tornado. But you also don't get, you know, he doesn't get your brother's pocket watch either. Yeah, correct. Correct, correct, correct. Okay. Because to be I stand, fair, yes, the right. Wicked Witch was yeah. even... All things being equal, fairly cool about the fact that Dorothy killed her sister. Right. I mean, just based on how most people would react to that. So, again, can I just get the shoes? Nope. Nope. You're like, okay, it's on. I know. It is on. So in the episode, the Wicked Witch loses her broom on Sesame Street, so she has to learn the importance of u- of using the word please and treating others with respect in order to get it back. <laughs> it's out there on Reddit. Check it out. You want to want to just kind of go back in time there for a little bit. I like his brother's like, you ain't getting this broom until you show me respect. <laughs> I'm like, yep, you're in the city now, player. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, it's mine. I ain't a munchkin player. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, skip it. Uh, the Hollywood Walk of Fame 2023 inductees were announced on Friday. There will be a total of 24 entertainers being recognized throughout the upcoming year. This is one of those where, as they come up, I'm kind of surprised that they weren't already recognized, at least as far as some of them go. But is it becoming like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Or- yes. And, and I don't know if it's just a condition of me getting older, so you got to see through some of the BS. You know, when you're young, you're like, yay. Sure. So-and-so got to star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And then I was like, and some people I know truly, truly deserve it. You've mm-hmm. been acting for 50 years. And sometimes I'm like, really? I mean, just. Uh, here's what I'll say about this. Not that it matters, because Steve and I spent three days down there. It's an asshole. Mm-hmm. It's horrible. Right. I think what it Kermit the Frog was I the think, only one I got. Oh, you there's know, like, with her. I saw Kermit. I literally stopped. Like hell yeah! I think if you, uh, I think anytime you see someone's name on a sidewalk, they have contributed to the community. So if you walk down here around Nordstrom's and Macy's, where they have the Seattle Walk, right? There's a bunch of different luminaries and people in town that have done a number of things to contribute to our community. Yeah. If you go to Palm Springs, it's the same thing. I think in Hollywood. It's it's more of the body of work, but that's Hollywood's industry. Right. So you're not looking at one movie or this or that. I think it's like more like, dude, you're Bob Barker. Like, you entertain yeah. people for a long time. Yeah. It's just... See, and now... And then, and then you stop when you walk over like, holy crap, it's Bob Barker. Well, yeah, and then, they got a matter. And then there are other areas when it comes to the Walk of Fame, if I'm not mistaken. You know, there's the more ritzy area where you get a lot of the bigger names. You get more towards the outskirts, the more sketchy spots of, the, of that Walk of Fame. That's where you're, you know. The stars get fewer, for sure. Exactly. So what I'm wondering is, do they, like, shift everybody down a bit when we get, like, no, hey, this no, other giant actor? Because you're, you're, where you are based on, there's, there's, there's more of the equation of, yes, you're right. Do we have enough room? Right, but there's some people who are put in front of like the the theater, or the Chinese theater, or the man's Chinese theater. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of different people who were there. And gotta for, be icons, and for a reason, like right. that was their spot, or this is where they played. Marlon Brando, yeah, exactly, sure, yeah. exactly. Uh, so they do have different categories. One is the motion picture category. This is one where. I'm not shocked that they weren't there, but I'm a little bit surprised that they All weren't, right. if that makes any kind of sense. But the motion picture category will include Uma Thurman, okay, Vince Vaughn, 
Ludacris, Bill Pullman, and director John Waters. Yay! Wait, is Ludacris there from his Fast and Furious? Maybe. I feel like he I had another show. No, he, another he may movie. have. But, but He's done a couple different movies. I know. Jesus. The difference is this. Fast and Furious, whatever you think of it, is a massive mm. franchise. Absolutely. Is that right? You can hate it, but you can't deny it. But I don't know the other movies. He, it's not like he was in Apocalypse Now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like DMX. Well, sure, he was in Exit Wounds, but I don't know that you call this a cinematic master. Right. We were doing just a crap, just basically doing what we're doing now, but a little bit more crass. Yeah. In Baltimore during the middays. I don't know what the hell John Waters was doing. I know the for a fact that he listened to the show. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I want to come in and be on your show. Okay. And we're like, oh, okay. He was great. And he had just hitchhiked across the United States or some weird stuff where what, he did What did he, he direct? He didn't want anybody to Every, know. Like, he is like the godfather of trash. Uh, and that's okay. not even an insult. He would tell you like. Hairspray, yeah. stuff that you. Gotcha. Right, so hairspray is what good most people garbage know. movies. Right. Absolutely. Right. I, I, you know, they're good, but there's something classic there's, about There's it. some weirdness about <laughs> right. him. But he was, he's just a comic genius. Okay. He's, he's hysterical. He, he was such a great. And he was supposed to be in there for like 20 minutes. Next thing you know, it's like an hour and 15, and John Waters is still talking to us. And we're just like, what is happening? He had to blow his hand along. Like, what is happening hand along right to leave. He's like, yeah, but I'm having fun. <laughs> exactly. uh, the recording music category, which I don't know if that, if that should be in Hollywood. You know what I mean? I think maybe just because they do the Grammys and everything. For, you know, Hollywood gets to lay claim to anything entertainment except Broadway. But right? you're going to get uh, Blake Shelton in there, Mark Anthony, Lenny Kravitz, and, of course, the Joe Bros themselves, the Jonas Brothers. They're going to make their way out. Uh, right. All right. That, that's Whatever. fair. That's and, fair. Yeah. Uh, finally, you get the television category. The honorees include director John Favreau, Mindy Kaling, Martin Lawrence, Ralph Macchio, and Ellen Pompeo. Hmm. Ralph Macchio. Huh? Ralph Macchio. That's for TV. I mean. Because legitimately, other than Cobra Kai, like he's the karate kid. I know he had done some other things, but you get nothing you I named don't, don't off the remember, top of your remember. head. Right? Did you read about stuff about uh, Martin Lawrence and uh, Eddie Murphy? Yes. That is great. About how their kids are getting well, no, married. Basically, like Martin Law- on the Yeah. So uh, Eric Murphy is marrying Martin Law- They're They're engaged. Right. Oh, they actually are engaged. Martin Lawrence's okay. daughter. They've been dating for a number right. of years. And so the given that it's his daughter, Martin both, is on the hook. Both of them said, both of them said, hey, we, we, we don't get involved in our kids, man. We, we love the fact they love each other. They're, they're doing their thing and all that stuff. Martin's like, well, daddy's money. I'm not paid for this wedding. <laughs> 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 it's like, it's like a donkey Eddie, paid Eddie, for this. Eddie, 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 you're paying for the wedding. You got it, man. Uh, what, what, what to watch tonight? Game three of the Stanley Cup finals. Tampa Bay Lightning host the Colorado Avalanche, who I believe are up two to nothing they in are. this series they right now. They beat the piss out of Lightning. The other yes, night. sir. So that continues tonight on ABC. And then uh, late night tonight, we got Jimmy Fallon. He's got Kareem Abdul Jabbar and Kristen Bell. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. You are listening to the men's room. Be ready for the handoff with Heritage Distilling's canned cocktails. Real cocktails made with real spirits. Drop the hard seltzers made by Big Beer on the East Coast with their fake flavors, fake sweeteners, and after game bloating. Ew. Real cocktails can only be made with real spirits. Heritage Distilling's canned cocktails. Locally made, locally loved, and award winning. Available at local retailers and heritagedistilling.com. 6.9% ABV, Gig Harbor, Washington. The men's room retail. Turns with miles and thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. Man on TikTok is building an army of 1.4 million frogs in his backyard. Meanwhile, a guy in China loses his girlfriend in nine grand and is forever scarred. Florida man hauling a van doesn't read the height requirements on a highway bridge. Rescued cat in Tennessee is actually something that could hurt you, a smidge. And it's even uh, sunny enough in Montreal to comfortably go topless. It's time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my cock. Hey, top seven going to Tennessee where a couple had a stray animal on their back porch. They loaded up the car and headed for the nearest shelter after a baby kitten rushed to their back door. They burst through the door of the local shelter and informed them that they had a little kitten that uh, had need for immediate home. That's when the staff of the shelter informed them that they hadn't loaded up any ordinary domestic kitten, but a little bobcat cub. <laughs> they took the feline in and uh, transferred the baby to a local wildlife rescue. Okay. Which, to be honest with you, is probably the best way that that could have possibly gone down. Just, you didn't want mom to be right on the heels of that little one? No, you really do not. Wait, so, you know, circumstances are what they are. Yeah. I mean, it'll probably be fine in the end. 
And I like to believe that if it was like any other animal, if you knew that it was a wild animal, you'd you'd not, you're not missing. You'd have left it go, right? Yeah. But there's something about just a little baby kitten that was there. You know, the, oh, look at that little kitten. Right. The guy that tried to do right there on the side of the road there, Miles, where he stopped there and he found a little baby kitten out there screaming for help. Oh, all yeah. of a sudden, yeah. his 30 yeah. brothers yeah. and sisters more came out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in other news in China, a man has taken his recent breakup rather hard. Since breaking it off with his most recent girlfriend, he's com- uh, compiled a laundry list of expenditures that he incurred during their relationship. And it is detailed. He went through their entire relationship that lasted several months and took note of every time that he spent money or time with the woman and is now expecting her to pay him back for his wasted efforts. In all, he said to her a bill totaling about $9,000. The list, was sh- words, dude. the list was shared in part on social media, and it's uh, had its share of criticism. Right. There's nothing legally binding about anything that you've sent her. You can go ahead and just say that. Right. You're all- just bitter. You're angry. We right. get it, but you're not getting the money. And all you're doing is looking petty. That That's the truth. Though, that right? is all it is. And here's the other thing there, Slick, is that social media exists. So back in the day, you could have done this and just been a jackass. But now that it's out there, now all of your per- perspective dates right. can see that you you pull this crap when things don't work out. I get it. You're hurt. It's okay to be hurt. Everyone gets hurt. That's, right. that's what it's about. Right. And, and you're right. With social media, and since everyone does basically a goddamn background check on her ass. Oh, yeah. Running, man, that's the ultimate red flag. Exactly. If this doesn't work out, this dude believes I'm on the hook. Right. What's scarier is this dude is actually paying attention specifically to how much money he spends right. per date. If he keeps a ledger of all that y'all are doing. <laughs> right. Run. That's y'all. the last thing I want to do. Uh, I'd be mad. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Jesus H. Right. Sometimes doing what you feel is right puts you in a bigger bind than you anticipated. A TikTok user recently posted a video of the consequences of his actions and helping the local ecosystem. He's gone around his local ponds that have started to dry up and takes it upon himself to rescue pods of tadpoles uh, that would otherwise perish in the drying conditions. He's accomplished this mission, saving upwards of 1.4 million animals, but now they've all hatched and taken up residence in his garden, which is now uninhabitable to him. He posted the video of what he calls his frog army. What did he think would happen? There's nothing. Right. You want to save animals, save animals, but you do recognize that, like... You're putting the plague of Egypt in your backyard. <laughs> yeah. You weird kids, we just reach down with two handfuls and pull them up and just go like, ooh, slime. Right. Watch, them, watch those little guys swim around and put them right back down mm-hmm. in the puddle. Exactly. <laughs> God, it's so <laughs> gross. When they lay eggs, man, I don't oh, know. It's so it's many. Disgusting. Was a, you would just take a stick in a pond and you'd lift the stick, and I mean, it's just draped with future frogs. And it's man. crazy how they all stick together, too. Like, well, you know what, for wet, some reason, they... They all don't seem to live. No, so, so that's why they fit. do so many. I mean, fish right? are definitely eating them. They're 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 definitely they're an up. easy mark. But you yeah. know, any animal that is not top of the food chain, since you have more animals, bigger litter, a bigger brood, exactly. right? You know what I mean? That, that's how it works. Right there we go. So. Oh, turn you down just a little oh, bit. Oh, look up. That is it for your headlines. And with that, Mike Hawk is out. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Men's Room Happy Hour is up next exclusively on the Odyssey app. We'll see you there. Yes, indeed. It's all true. But in the meantime, well, we be all about this bitch for 180 seconds or so. So until then, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful. The men's room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh, man! A Double Flush production. At Seattle Credit Union, we believe in our communities and the people we serve. The path to U.S. citizenship can be expensive, which is why we offer citizenship loans to cover the costs associated with this process. We also offer a fee-based alternative for each citizen loan type for people who would prefer not to pay any interest. Visit seattlecu.com to learn more or give us a call at 855-575-9352 to speak with a friendly loan expert to get started today. Seattle Credit Union is federally insured by the NCUA. At Seattle Credit Union, we believe in our communities and the people we serve. The path to U.S. citizenship can be expensive, which is why we offer citizenship loans to cover the costs associated with this process. We also offer a fee-based alternative for each citizen loan type for people who would prefer not to pay any interest. Visit seattlecu.com to learn more or give us a call at 855-575-9352 to speak with a friendly loan expert to get started today. Seattle Credit Union is federally insured by the NCUA. 
At Seattle Credit Union, we believe in our communities and the people we serve. The path to U.S. citizenship can be expensive, which is why we offer citizenship loans to cover the costs associated with this process. We also offer a fee-based alternative for each citizen loan type for people who would prefer not to pay any interest. Visit seattlecu.com to learn more or give us a call at 855-575-9352 to speak with a friendly loan expert to get started today. Seattle Credit Union is federally insured by the NCUA. BECU. You've heard the name, seen the letters. But what does BECU stand for? Simply put, not for profit BECU stands for people, for charting your own path, for choosing what's right for members instead of what's profitable for someone else, because they are the reason our credit union exists. So we do everything in our power to help them reach their financial goals. BECU. Power in people. All Pacific Northwest residents are eligible to join. Federally insured by NCUA.